In this video, I'll be going through Work Together Problem 16-3, and it is from page 486 in your Century 21 Accounting Advanced Textbook, Edition 11 by Gilbertson and Lehman. So credit to them for this problem. In the first part on 16-1, remember we figured out what our contribution margins were and made our income statement with those contribution margin amounts, right? We took it a step further in 16-2 and we figured out what is our break-even point, okay? In both sales dollars and in unit sales, okay? So now we're building on that. We're still using our amounts from 16-2 and we are calculating first the amount of sales dollars needed to achieve a net income of $6,000 for July. So if our plan net income is $6,000, our total fixed costs, I can just do an equal sign, go back to 16.2 and find my fixed costs. And they were here, $16,000 total fixed costs. Okay, so our required contribution margin is just adding those together. Okay, 22,000. So if our required contribution margin is 22,000 and our contribution margin rate, we found that if we look back, it is 20%. And so what is the amount of sales dollars we need? We'll just divide. We need $110,000 in sales, okay? So we are gonna determine the net income or loss if 4,000 units are sold, 5,000 are sold, and 6,000 are sold. Okay, so that's here. So per unit, um, it looks like they are $16. So we'll put a 16 here and our variable costs per unit, okay. Uh, to find that amount, we can take our total variable cost, which is 96000 and then we can divide that by um, the 7500 sold there, would get us $12.80 in variable costs, which means the remaining amount, when we subtract, $3.20 is our contribution margin. Okay, so at 4,000, we just multiply. $16 times 4,000, and then same thing, 4,000 times 1,280, and I'm just not going to autofill, and I'll do the same, 4,000 times 320, and um, We'll do 5,000 times 16, 5,000 times 1280, no thank you, and times 320, so you can see here at 5,000 units, your contribution margin is 16,000, and now at 6,000 units, we'll do our multiplication. And we could have used some absolute references so that we could autofill, but we would have lost our formatting probably. So it's almost just easier to do all those formulas. Okay, so then we got up to 19,200 contribution margin at 6,000 units. What are our fixed costs? We can get those from our worksheet here. And that was 16,000. Same on all of them, right? So then our income from operations. We just subtract, oh, negative 3,200. And if you copy that, you can paste special, paste special the formula only and it won't mess with your formatting. So that's kind of a hint there. So that is our um, answers for the second part, number two, determining our income or net loss at the different sales units amounts, okay? Now number three, Kathy's Cakes normally sells 7,500 cakes in July. If the selling price is reduced by a dollar, 
they expect to sell 9,000 cakes. Calculate this change's effect on net income. Okay. So let's figure it out at the current price and at the reduced price, right? So your current price is, wasn't it $16 a cake? Right? I think it was. So current per unit is 16 with variable costs of 1280 and contribution margin of 320. The unit sold is 7,500 because that's our normal. So then we'll just multiply. Okay, and then our fixed costs again, we have them up here, 16,000. And our income with our normal pricing would be $8,000, current price. But the suggestion was we could reduce the price by a dollar to 15. So what are our variable costs? They're not going to change. We're still going to have to pay for all of those same things, which means our contribution margin decreased down to $2.20. However, our units sold are going to be 9000 So what happens? Is that enough? to make a difference, to make up for reducing the price. $19,800 here are fixed costs. There's still $16,000. $3,800 would be our net income from operations. So it is not worth it, worth it to do the price reduction and increase our sales volume. That's what we figured out there. Okay. And then number four, it says in September, Kathy's Cakes expanded to sell pies at $20 each. Use the following results from September to calculate the product sales dollars and product unit sales necessary for Kathy's Cakes to earn a planned net income of $36,000. Now we're adding pies, we've got to figure out our sales mix. The first thing we've got is how much product sales for cakes. It looks to me like we have sales of 120,000. And then for pies, it would be 80,000. Net sales, uh, it looks like we've got $200,000 in net sales. And so we just figure out what portion each one is for the sales mix. 60% and 40% obviously would be the opposite. Okay. Our contribution margin. Looks like we've got $50,000 in contribution margin with our net sales of 200,000. Contribution margin rate is gonna be 25% when we divide. All right, total fixed costs. Let's see what we have here, 19,000. Planned income from operations. Uh, we were told that we wanted to have $36,000. So required contribution margin, we'll add those together. $55,000 is how much we'll need. Um, just grab this cell again, and our contribution margin rate was 25%, which means when we divide, we're going to need 220,000 in sales dollars. Okay, our sales mix. We already figured this out up above, it's 60-40. Right? Okay, total sales dollars. We figured out that was going to be 220,000. So our product sales. We'll multiply $132,000 in cakes and $88,000 in pies. 
and then our unit sales. So we have our product sales dollars here, and then our unit sales. Um, where did we have those? Oh, here we go. $20 per pies. Perfect. And we have been selling cakes for 16 for quite some time in this problem. So 16 and 20. Now we'll divide. Okay, 8,250 needed cakes and 4,400 for pies. And that is it. For 16.3, which was calculating sales to earn plan net income, looking at the effect of volume and sales price changes, and looking at sales mix. There's a lot there. So watch it carefully, and good luck with your on your own.